Hey guys, what's going on? Jeff here from Films at Home. And today we're gonna do a little bit of a different type of video. Um, if you've been watching my channel, you know that it's a lot of 4K reviews, home theater reviews, um, Blu-ray 4K collection type videos, which I'm still going to do and I still love to do. Um, and that's what this channel is about. But one thing I wanted to do was to try to incorporate um, some different aspects of my collection more into the videos and talking about more movies in general. Um, so you've seen things where I've gone over like my 3D collection, my 4K collection, Screen Factory. I've done little collection spotlights. Uh, and now what I'm going to do instead, and this is based on a poll that I put out on YouTube. I uh, got almost 200 votes in the poll, so I feel like I got a pretty good portion of, uh, of you guys to, to vote on which topics I should cover. And one thing that people wanted to see was sort of a series ranking. Um, it's a pretty popular video style that a lot of other YouTubers do where you take a popular movie series, think Star Wars, um, the Marvel Studios series, uh, horror franchises like Friday the 13th, Halloween, um, you know, stuff like that. You take a large franchise and you break it down and you sort of rank each movie and where it stands. And the nice thing is, is in my collection, um, I pretty much have all of these movies. And so I can show off the different physical media releases while also talking about each movie, what I liked about it and where I rank it in the series. So today I figured the first one that's going to be pretty popular, easy to start this off, um, is Star Wars. So I've got all the different Star Wars movies here. I actually need to grab Solo uh, in one second, but I have all the different Star Wars movies and I'm gonna go through, rank them in order of my least favorite to my favorite and uh, just kind of talk about each one and also talk about the uh, different releases that are available for physical media. So hopefully you enjoy that. If you like this type of stuff, definitely let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to hear what you guys think about it. Like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please remember to subscribe. And without further ado, let's jump into the Star Wars series rankings with my least favorite starting first. And you will get my favorite towards the end. Okay, so as you know, or as you probably know, there are currently 10 Star Wars movies. We have episode 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, as well as Rogue One and Solo. So there's 10 movies that have currently come out in the Star Wars saga with more to come. But we've got 10 to work with right now. So we'll be counting down from 10 to 1 in terms of my least favorite to my favorite. Now, I had a hard time with least favorite. It was close. But I'm honestly going to go with uh, The Last Jedi, number 10. I just, I didn't really feel this as much as The Force Awakens. I didn't connect with it. I didn't like it as much. I thought it was kind of uh, boring in a lot of ways. It was nice to have Luke Skywalker back, but he was so underused and kind of just played this curmudgeon -y version of himself. Um, there are some great moments in it. Like there are individual scenes, which I rank highly, stuff like the throne room fight um, and, you know, some final scenes with Luke, which are really cool. But overall, I thought this movie lagged far behind where The Force Awakens was and it is my least favorite of the bunch. I do have the 4K release with the slipcover. There's also steelbooks of this. There was a Target exclusive. There's tons of different versions of The Last Jedi, um, but I just thought it's the weakest one so far, and I'm really hoping that they can uh, get back on track with uh, Episode Nine here, The Rise of Skywalker. I think they will. I have high hopes for it, but I just didn't like The Last Jedi, so that one's gonna go number 10. Number nine on my list is actually going to be Attack of the Clones, and I have this here in this uh, box set of the prequel trilogy. So um, this is a kind of cool set that uh, I'm able to, I was able to get a while back. It's very hard to find this box set anymore. I believe they're out of print, but Attack of the Clones is in here. Um, I, I pick Attack of the Clones just because there's only really one scene in that that I really like, and it's the scene in the arena uh, towards the latter third of the movie um in in the end and there's a really great scene there and then a good fight scene with count dooku but like overall attack of the clones just didn't really connect with me as much as uh some of the other prequel movies had even and uh i just didn't really i didn't really love it except for that one sort of instance 
I even thought that the Phantom Menace had better uh, battle scenes and it was more interesting because it was starting fresh. It was introducing new characters and so there, there's an element to that. Um, but yeah, Attack of the Clones is going to be number nine for me. And then that transitions well right into number eight, which is going to be the Phantom Menace. Um, I like the Phantom Menace. There are some cool things. The um, pod racing scene, I think, is really cool. I remember it as a kid being super cool. Uh, introducing Qui-Gon Jinn and a young Obi-Wan. Uh, Darth Maul is a great villain. So it has that going for it. But there are a lot of sort of cheesy moments. Jar Jar Binks, obviously, kind of cheesy, kind of goofy. I don't mind him so much, but... Um, it, it felt a little bit like sort of just a, um, it was an introductory story, right? It wasn't like a really in-depth thing. There wasn't a whole lot going on. Um, the kind of trade war type stuff was a little boring. Didn't give me a real reason to invest. And so, you know, for that reason, Phantom Menace is going to fall in at number eight on my list. Now at number seven, I am going to throw in, uh, I'm going to go with Solo. So. Solo I actually really liked. So by no means is putting this at number seven mean that um, I didn't like it. I really thought it was much better than what people said. I know people don't like the actor who played uh, Han Solo in this. Uh, all, Aiden a Aaron Rich or whatever the hell his name is. But I, I thought he did fine. Donald Glover's super cool as um, Lando Calrissian. Woody Harrelson's in it. Amelia Clark. From Game of Thrones, Daenerys uh, Targaryen, she's in it and is pretty cool. Um, and it has an awesome cameo at the end, which I'm hoping they can build on in a sequel. We'll see what happens. And I can never get enough Chewbacca. So uh, Solo's number seven, but only because I think that um, the next six movies are just better. They're more well done. I like them more. But by no means is Solo a bad movie. I would never bash this. I thought it was a lot of fun. It was cool to look at a different aspect of the Star Wars universe that wasn't part of the, um, you know, the trilogy series. This is truly the only one that's really outside of all that. Even Rogue One uh, falls right in line with the trilogy series and on the same timeline and, and sequence of events. And so it was really cool to see Solo um, kind of take that different approach. I'm disappointed in the box office results. I was hoping they could do more so they can do more stuff like this. An Obi-Wan movie, Boba Fett movie. Um, there's a Boba Fett kind of TV show coming out. Maybe not about Boba Fett, but The Mandalorian. Um, but I, I was hoping they'd do more outside of this trilogy, the Skywalker trilogy, because it's getting, I shouldn't say trilogy, it's a trilogy of trilogies. Um, but it's it's getting stale, and I got some excitement out of this. And, and so I didn't think it was as bad as a lot of people thought. Now that brings me into number six. And uh, number six for me is actually going to be an original trilogy uh, movie, and this is Return of the Jedi Episode Six. Um, again, I have this set which um, goes with this one. These two I got together way back in the day. Um, they're not; they're they are the special editions with CGI and everything. But these are really hard to find. You can't get these slipcases anymore. Um, and so, um, Episode Six here, Return of the Jedi. That's going to be my pick. Funny enough, for number six in the series. Um, and the reasoning is I didn't think it was nearly as good as the other two movies in this original trilogy. The Ewok stuff I always thought was kind of lame. Um, the whole, like, let's blow up the Death Star again. You know, it is what it is. We've seen that. Um, it was a nice ending, but it's, it's by far the weakest of the original trilogy. And there are a couple more movies outside of the original trilogy, which I just think did a better job, told a better Star Wars story. Um, so Return of the Jedi is going to be number six for me, which then brings me into number five, which is going to be back in the prequel trilogy. We're going to go with episode three, Revenge of the Sith. I think it's the strongest of the prequel trilogies. It really does tie in. It finally ties in all the loose ends, gives you Darth Vader, um, kind of explains how that all came together. There's some really dark scenes in here. Um, there's some great fight scenes between Palpatine and Yoda and, you know, Yoda fighting with a lightsaber, something you hadn't really seen so much of in depth. So uh, props to uh, Return of the, sorry, Revenge of the Sith for that one. Um, and some really cool fight scenes, Obi-Wan and Anakin, and then how that all came together and how the Jedi kind of fell. Like, it's a really important story in the series. And so that's going to fall into number five on my list, again, in this nice prequel box set. Um, 
Number four for me is going to be Star Wars The Force Awakens. So, so much hype around this when it came out. And I went to the theaters, I believe I saw it twice. I saw it a couple different times. And I liked it. It just kind of rehashed, um, you know, a lot of like A New Hope. But you sort of had to do that because you're introducing new characters. There's a whole new universe. You fast forward, you know, 25, 30 years, whatever it is, into the future. Uh, past where Return of the Jedi left us. So you have to establish a lot of things and you got to establish the bad guys and, you know, the uh, resistance and, and set all that up again. And so, um, but overall, really cool, really nice to see like characters like Han Solo come back, Chewbacca, R2, C3PO. Um, great to see Stormtroopers back in action. I thought Kylo Ren was a little... Uh, kind of wimpy in this one compared to the last Jedi he gets a little tougher hopefully he comes around in the third movie so the you know the villain's a little weak but I thought the heroes and the characters the introduction of Finn and Poe and uh, Rey all really really strong characters I really like them a lot and so the Force Awakens was much better than the last Jedi in my opinion and I'm hoping they can get back to that success with J.J. Abrams for Rise of Skywalker. Now that's going to bring me to number three and number three is going to be one of the spinoffs, it's going to be Rogue One. I loved Rogue One. Rogue One, as you now know, because I've outranked all the other new Star Wars movies, this is my favorite of the new generation of Star Wars. I loved the kind of heist, um, thriller, almost like Mission Impossible vibe that this gave, where you're trying to get plans for the Death Star, and it's this suicide mission, and, you know, there aren't a ton of, there's no Jedi, it's kind of just this... You know, it's this group of ragtag resistance fighters and uh, it explores a whole new uh, area of that original trilogy timeline. And of course, the ending scene with Darth Vader. I don't know that there is a better scene in any Star Wars movie than when he comes on that ship at the end and just dominates. That's probably the best thing they've ever shot in a Star Wars movie. Absolutely loved it. Loved seeing Darth Vader back. I, he is my favorite Star Wars character. I need more Darth Vader in my new Star Wars movies. I wish they would kind of explore that in-between time period between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope like they did here um, with Rogue One. But an awesome cast. I really liked, you know, it wasn't a bunch of uh, people that you recognize necessarily, which was nice. Um, but their characters are really well developed and I really liked the movie. Thought it was really well shot. Um, tons of action and super exciting and so this is kind of what I want to see more of hopefully in this new generation of Disney Star Wars more Rogue One because this was excellent and now we're down to my final two uh, and in the number two spot it's going to be the original it's going to be episode four A New Hope it's a great movie it's what kicked off the franchise and introduced all the great new characters Luke and Han and Leia and Obi-Wan and Darth Vader and the Emperor, Stormtroopers, C-3PO, R2-D2. Like, think about how many iconic, iconic characters came out of this one movie. It spawned this whole generation of, you know, 10 plus movies, all kinds of TV shows, spinoffs, merchandise. It is what made Star Wars Star Wars. But in my opinion, it's still a little bit weaker than The Empire Strikes Back. Um, so it's going to fall in the number two spot, but... It's an absolute classic. Um, there is some cheesiness to it. There's a little bit of, um, you could tell it was kind of a lower budget than what was given for Empire Strikes Back. You could see that they were working with a little bit less. Um, and then with the success of that, Empire Strikes Back got so much money and resources thrown at it that it's just excellent. But A New Hope's going to be number two. And then, of course, in the number one spot, that leaves me with my favorite Star Wars movie, which is... The Empire Strikes Back. I absolutely love the scenes on Hoth, all the uh, at, at walkers in that whole scene with the snow speeders and Luke, and you got to wrap the rope around their legs and bring them down. Um, the sequences with Darth Vader and Luke in this are excellent. I really, really like them. I like the Cloud City stuff with Lando um, and how that all kind of came together. It really explored the universe much more, um, introduced some really cool things like um you know just just new new elements to the story you kind of got the feel in the first one like oh you got this bad guy here's darth vader here's the death star now where do we go and empire strikes back really shows the power of the empire shows how overpowering they can be 
and what this, um, you know, these resistance fighters are up against, um, the rebels, you know, what are they really, really fighting for? Um, and they're so outnumbered, they're so overmatched, but they're going to keep pushing. Um, and it just does a great job of exploring that character of Luke more. And of course, it has the ultimate reveal, um, you know, in maybe in movie history with Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. So it's hard to beat that. Overall, it is my favorite Star Wars movie. It's just so good from from top to bottom. Everything about it, I, I really love. And so um, you can't beat it. It has so many iconic scenes. It's easily number one in my book. And again, in this nice box set out of print um, with just the kind of regular uh, three disc Blu-ray sleeve here. Um, but overall, that's my ranking. That's 10 to one. Um, I'd be super interested to hear what you guys think in the comments because I think that these type of videos are going to be very controversial to a lot of people, but that's why I like them. That's why I wanna share my opinions, hear what you guys think, and that's how we can kind of have more discussions around movies outside of just collecting. Um, but again, just a quick recap to run through. Um, got the 4K of The Last Jedi. Then you've got the prequel trilogies here in this out of print uh, slip cover, slip box set. Um, got the original trilogies here in the same out of print slip box set. Rogue One on Blu ray with the slip cover. I love this slip cover. I love the artwork on it. It's one of my favorites. Uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens with the all black slip cover, which I also love. And then I've got the 4K of Solo. So, um, you know, I've got them all. They're great movies. Even, even when I talk about, you know, oh, what's my least favorite, The Last Jedi? It's by far, um, in my opinion, the weakest in the series. But it isn't even close to one of the worst movies I've ever seen. It's not even on that radar. Um, it's still enjoyable to watch. It's still fun. It's a Star Wars movie. You can't go wrong, in my opinion. I'm a huge Star Wars geek. I've got Darth Vader's lightsaber over there hanging on my wall. I've got Darth Vader uh, stand-up guy over here. I've got the Funkos. I absolutely love, love, love Star Wars. I've loved it since I was a kid. Um, and so even the worst Star Wars movie is usually better than, you know, your average movie that comes out every day. So um, I love to see where the franchise is going to go. These TV shows sound exciting. Some of these spinoffs, especially The Mandalorian and exploring some of the bounty hunters. Um, I'm excited for Rise of Skywalker, and I'm really, really hoping they can do a sequel to Solo, explore that interesting cameo at the end. Spoiler, if you haven't seen it, I won't mention who, but maybe explore that element and get more into that character because he is super interesting. Um, maybe have some more Darth Vader um, type stuff, and then just dive into the universe. Just show me more. Show me more of what the Jedi did in the Old Republic and things like that. So. I'm excited to see where it goes. I have high, high hopes for the series. Hopefully Disney um, can get back on track. They've they've kind of been hit or miss. I would say Rogue One, Force Awakens, and Solo are all um, hits. And Last Jedi is their only real miss so far. I guess Solo is kind of because of the box office close. But they've been fairly consistent. Uh, hopefully they can get back on track. But, you know, that's Star Wars. That's my collection. That's my rankings. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and share it with your friends. And if you are interested in supporting this channel, you like this type of content that's a little bit longer form, talks more about movies, you really enjoyed this, um, I'd love your support. There are a couple ways you can do that. One is by going to the PayPal link down in my description. That is a direct donation link. Whether you give $1, 5 10 20 whatever it is, it goes right to me and I'm able to take that and, and put that towards the channel. The other way you can support me is um, by following me on Instagram. The more followers I have on there, the uh, more content I'll generate for both Instagram and YouTube, and I'll get more followers, more subscribers. That helps build the channel. And you can also help support by clicking the Amazon links down in the description. I've built out a little storefront for 4K and Blu-ray movie deals. If you buy any movies through that, and I will be updating that uh, subsequently throughout you know, throughout the next foreseeable future, I'll be updating with new deals. If you buy a movie through that storefront, I get a little kickback. And there are also links to buy things like my movie shelving, the home theater seats I'm sitting in now, my projector behind me, projector screen, my new receiver from Denon, my subwoofer from SVS, lots of different things, my Atmos speakers. There's tons of stuff you can buy. And if you click any of those links and buy something through Amazon through that link, I get a small kickback, which helps support the channel. So I appreciate that. 
Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this series ranking. Uh, if you did, like I said, please let me know so I can keep doing this stuff. And it isn't if it isn't something you want to necessarily see, also let me know. I'm not afraid of criticism. I want to give you guys what you want to see. So please, please, please give me feedback on this one. Um, and other than that, I'll talk to you guys soon.